Hey friend, I'm Robin May and a few of the professional hats that I wear includes being a transformational speaker, a life coach, and a licensed therapist. And personally, well, I'm a wife, a mommy to three girls, and a pastor's wife, just to name a few. Girl, I'm over here doing all the things while trying to stay in shape and keep my skin clear. But the truth is, I don't want to be known for being busy. I think that's a scheme that somebody set up. No, I want to be known for living a life that is in perfect alignment with what God intended. And I want to help you do the same. So it's with that in mind, I'd like to welcome you right here to Intentional Conversations with Robin May and friends. Over here, we're creating a safe space to have real conversations with real women on real topics. This is a judgment-free zone where we can be vulnerable and honest and curious about our lives so that we can elevate not just what we do, but who we are. So if any of that resonates with you, again, welcome to our safe space. This is Intentional Conversations with Robin May and friends. Hey girl, welcome back to the podcast. Now listen, I am starting the second part of our previous episode. Remember, we are sharing the six, not five, but six, not five, but six. We are sharing the six ways that self-awareness is your secret weapon. And so in the previous episode, we laid the foundation and then I shared with you the first two reasons self-awareness is your secret weapon. And in this episode, I'm giving you the final four. So I want you to go ahead and tune in. But first, again, I am continuing to want your feedback. I want to hear from you. I want you to DM me on Robin May Online. I want you to email me or I want you to comment on YouTube because I want you to answer this question. You know that I am committed to helping you elevate not just what you do, but who you are. And I want to make sure I'm doing that in a way that fits into your world. I know you are busy, sis. I know you have a lot going on. There are a lot of people pulling on you. And I am over here coaching and prodding and challenging you to slow your life down long enough to pay attention to your life. But I know it's really crazy right now and you want to do it, but you just can't figure out how. And quite frankly, you need some of the strategies that I'm sharing in the life course to do that. And so I want to make sure that I can deliver the life course to you in a way that you can receive it. And so will you please DM me and answer that question, Robin? It would help me if it would just land in my email um, once a week for six months. Or Robin, once a week is way too much. I would love if I could get one video a month and I just take some time to unpack that and do those exercises. I want to know the best way that you can receive the life course because we are redoing some things with it. And I want to make sure that it is resonating and fitting into your world. All right, girl, that's it. Let's go on to the episode. Let's let's check these four reasons. The last four reasons self-awareness is your secret weapon. Self-awareness helps you stop projecting your stuff onto other people. Let's go to number three. Self-awareness helps you to take responsibility for what's yours and release that that is not yours. So again, self-awareness helps you to know to take responsibility for what's your stuff, but it also helps you to release what's not your stuff. So again, remember I talked about the board of advisors or your accountability partners or whatever you call them. And I talked about how if somebody says something to me or brings something to my to me about me, I take it to these people. And so they help me to sort through what's my stuff and what's not. And because I know me, I know, well, no, That's not necessary. That's not my stuff. Like that's your, that's your life experience. That's a wound that you had. That's an experience you had with another friend. That's an experience you had in another relationship and you're projecting that onto me. And so it keeps me from taking on other people's stuff because I know what's mine and what's not mine. And where I have a blind spot, I have accountability to help. You getting that? So because I'm self-aware, I know. So For example, if somebody makes an assumption that maybe I was, I don't know, being dismissive, I'm just trying to come up with something. If they say that I was being dismissive of them 
and and I know me and I know that that's not how I normally show up, but I take it to my accountability part. I'm like, am I being dismissive? And they're like, no, I think that's a mis they're misconstruing that. Well, then that helps me to understand you may have an undercurrent in your life where you feel easily ignored or easily dismissed. And that's how you see the world. That's the filter on which you see the world. And because that's the filter on which you see the world, you're projecting that onto me when that's not me. Now, because I care about you, I'm gonna be sensitive to it, but I'm not responsible for that. So I'm not gonna receive what you're projecting onto me. So self-awareness keeps me from projecting stuff onto others, but it helps me to know my stuff so that I'm not receiving stuff that has nothing to do with me. And again, that example helps us understand self-awareness. You have a filter through which you see the world. If you see the world through everybody being out to get you, then everybody you encounter, you're going to receive it as them being out to get you. Any little thing they say and do, you're going to see it through the lens of them being out to get you. If you have a lens that you have to self-protect because you don't know who's going to harm you, then everything you do, you're going to do it through a lens of self-protection. If you have a thought that you don't measure up, that other people are always discounting you, that they're always overlooking you. If that's the lens through which you see the world, every encounter you have, you're going to see it. That somebody can say, hey, and you hear it as, so you see how they just said, hey, that's your stuff. So that's why you got to know yourself. That's how you have to be self-awareness. That's how you clean the filter so that you cannot, you're not projecting your stuff on the other people. Baby, let's keep going. So number one, self-awareness allows you to understand you and understand your unique strengths and how you show up. Self-awareness gives you, helps you to not project your stuff onto other people. Self-awareness helps you to take responsibility for what's your stuff and it releases you from taking on the issues and challenges of other people. Here's number four. Self-awareness humbles you because you realize you need grace and forgiveness too. Y'all know I have a new saying. You know I have my hoodies that are on sale, by the way. Life be life in, but God, go to robertmayonline.com, robertmayonline.com to get access to the sale for the hoodies. But I have a new saying, people be peopling, but so do you. Sis, people be peopling, but so do you. You people as well, right? What do I mean? You show up in a certain way. That's what we've been talking about. You trigger folks too. They may not ever say it to you because they don't want to get cursed out. They may not ever say it to you because they don't want you crying and, uh, and it feels like manipulation with your tears. They may never say anything to you because they don't want you to cut them off and not fool with them anymore. But I'm telling you, people are triggered by you as well. And so self-awareness helps you to be humble because you know you need grace and you know you need forgiveness. So you give grace and you give forgiveness. I made a post recently on Instagram that says, if I offend somebody or frustrate somebody or disappoint somebody and they decide to separate from me because of that, it may hurt my feelings, but I have to accept it because I teach people to set boundaries, even if it means setting boundaries with me. And so when you understand that you do things that frustrate people as well, then you will give out so much grace. You'll give out so much forgiveness. Now you'll do it with boundaries. You'll do it because now you're self-aware. You'll do it with boundaries. You're not, you'll give out as much grace and forgiveness as needed, but it may mean that the relationships shift because you now know you need to set boundaries because they are a repeat offender and the behavior is continuing but you give as much grace as you can because you know you need grace. You forgive because you know you want to be forgiven. And you recognize that I may have never done anything to Sally, but I did something to Susie. And I know I had hurt Susie and it may not have even been intentional. It might've been with my sharp tongue. It may have been with my sarcastic humor. It may have been with my forgetfulness. Can I tell you some of my friends this past weekend read me for how long it takes me to respond to text messages? And I was showing them on my phone. Let's see how many I have now. I was showing them that I had at that point 175 text messages that I hadn't read. Now I have 147. But I'm joking about it, but that can be frustrating. One of my girlfriends said, girl, I was in distress. And you come texting me three weeks later talking about, hey, girl. So I may have upset Susie. I never did anything to Sally, but 
but I have harmed, hurt, disappointed, frustrated Susie. And I want Susie to show me some grace. So I'm going to show you some grace, Sally. Because because what you just did, you tripped out, Sally. Now, uh -huh. and depending on how egregious it is, I may have to set some boundaries. But if it's, if it's not as egregious as me having to disconnect from you, then I'm going to show you some grace, Sally. Because I need Susie to show me some grace. Y'all with me? So self-awareness helps you to be humble. You show grace. You give forgiveness because you need some grace and you need some forgiveness. All right. So here is the fifth one. I can't believe we're already at number five. Here's the fifth one. Self-awareness is your secret weapon because it gives you the information you need to stop repetitive patterns of dysfunction. Oh, I was giving y'all six reasons this whole time. I've been <laughs> this whole time. I have been saying six reasons. I think I'm going to give y'all, I've been saying five. I'm going to give you six. So when you see the title of this podcast, it's not going to say five reasons. Self-awareness is your secret weapon. It's going to say six reasons self-awareness is your secret weapon. Because, baby, what I'm not going to do is re-record this podcast. That's what I'm not about to do. So here's the fifth reason. Number five, it gives you the information you need to stop repetitive patterns of dysfunction. Oh, my God. When you become self-aware, it gives you the information you need to stop the patterns of dysfunctional behavior. Self-awareness requires that you slow your life down long enough to pay attention to what is working and what isn't working. That's why I'm always telling you, sis, pause and pay attention, pause and pay attention. That's the whole point of the life course. It helps you to pause your life, even if it's 30 minutes once a week. It helps you to pause your life, slow down, take inventory of who you are. And self-awareness, when you slow your life down and you can look at how you're showing up, you'll begin to discover some patterns. One of the exercises that I have with my um, um, coach uh, counseling clients, I actually want to create a journal like this. Somebody, y'all want to help me create this journal? But it's a self-awareness exercise. And I tell them just to grab a journal and let's say that they are 40 years old. I tell them, to break their life up into yearly increments. So on one page of the journal, they'll put zero to five years. The next page of their journal, they'll put six to 10 years. The next page, they'll put 11 to 15. The next page, they'll put 16 to 20. You get the point all the way up to their current age. And I tell them just to keep that journal with them. And when, you know how you'll be looking at something on TV and you'll be like, oh, I remember when I was five years old, such and such. Go write that in the, corresponding year. You are doing some self-reflection and you remember the first heartbreak you had was at 15 and it really devastated you. You go put it there. My first heartbreak was at 15 and how you responded. So you keep an inventory of your life process. Why am I doing that with clients? Because what you begin to see is a pattern of behavior. For my life, y'all, I did this exercise and I began to see very specifically, this is a very specific response, but I began to see that every September, something unbelievably impactful happened for our family. Every September, something significant would happen. And so, because I'm a woman of faith, I'm able now to... So those of you who are watching on the podcast, you're watching the podcast, you see I'm doing something. I'm adjusting this microphone. <laughs> so I apologize. So I began to see that every September things were happening in our life. And so now around August, I start praying and I start covering my family. I start telling the enemy, you have no authority in my life. I start covering those areas. And then I also say, God, all the blessings that you want to come in September, because there's something about that time of the year for our family. That is what self-awareness allow you to do. It'll help you understand the patterns of your life and even the destructive patterns that have been repetitive in your life. You can begin to be aware of them so that you can shift that behavior. Whew. And now number six, because I'm giving you the six ways that self-awareness is your secret weapon. Number six, self-awareness helps you to decrease irrational guilt. 
because you've done the work to get clear on what really matters to you. Let me tell it to you again. Number six, self-awareness helps to decrease irrational guilt because you've done the work to get clear on what really matters to you. So remember, when you become self-aware, again, if you go through the life course, I share with you the process of uncovering your values. We have core values and we have character values. And both of those, your core and character values, shape how you show up in the world. And when you don't honor your deepest values, you will have an undercurrent of life dissatisfaction. You will. When you do not honor your deepest values, you will have an undercurrent of life dissatisfaction. And remember, I have discovered that you have core and character values. And so when you get clear on your core and character values, then that begins to shape what matters in your life. It shapes your priorities. It shapes where you focus. And so when you know where you're prioritizing your time, your talent, your treasure, your energy, when you know where you are prioritizing it, it does mean some things are not going to be on that priority list. But now, because you understand what really matters to you, you understand your life vision, you understand what you are working toward. So now when that guilt comes up because you had to say no to something. Now, when that guilt shows up, because remember, feelings are not right. Feelings are not wrong. They're just there to give you information, but the feelings are going to knock on the door. Instead of inviting the feeling in and telling it to have a seat, you can evaluate the feeling. So now when you have that guilt feeling shows up, if it's an irrational guilt, because hear me, some guilt is not irrational. If I say something that hurts my daughter's feelings, I'm going to feel guilty. And if I try to dismiss that feeling, then I could become a sociopath. No, I want to acknowledge, yeah, I, I felt so guilty, Ryan. I felt so guilty, Ryan, uh, Reagan and Riley, because I, I didn't want, I did not mean to say that in that way. Please accept my apology. It keeps me humble, right? But there's also an irrational guilt. And many times people please or struggle with irrational guilt. I want you to go listen to my podcast all on people pleasing because many times people please or struggle with irrational guilt. Let me pause here because I told you to go listen to my podcast. I can't remember. Did I do it? Did I do it as a podcast episode? Because if I did not, I need to because I know I did it as a YouTube series. Let's see. Let's see. Ah, yeah. Episode seven. Episode seven is on people pleasing. So I want you to listen to that episode. But oftentimes people pleasers struggle with irrational guilt because they had to say no to something. But when you become clear that I am saying no so that I can say yes over here, Every yes is going to bring about a no somewhere else. And every no can bring about a yes somewhere else. So when you are clear about what is governing and guiding your life, you become emotionally mature enough to understand that, yes, I'm going to have to say no to some things, but I'm saying no to some things for a bigger yes. And so when that guilt shows up, I can release the irrational guilt because I know what I am prioritizing. It doesn't mean the guilt won't show up. It's going to knock at the door. But when I process the guilt, I can release it because I understand that I am prioritizing what really matters most. So those are the six reasons, sis. Those are the six reasons that people pleasing is your secret weapon to create and curate the life you really want. It's going to require that you understand you, that you pay attention to you. So let's run through those again really quick. Number one, you discover your unique strengths and what triggers you and how you show up. Number two, it gives you the freedom from projecting your stuff onto other people. Number three, it helps you to take responsibility for what is yours, but release those things that have nothing to do with you. That's other people's stuff. Number four, it humbles you because you realize you need grace and forgiveness. And so you give it freely. Number five, it gives you the information you need to stop repetitive patterns of dysfunction. And then number six, it decreases the irrational guilt because you've done the work to get clear on what truly matters to you. Baby, this episode, this episode is fire. If I must say so myself, girl, I think you need to listen to this again. I think 
you need to invite your friends to listen to it and y'all have a di- I'm always wanting y'all to have a discussion about the podcast and invite me to the discussion. Now, am I going to respond to the text message? Probably not. Okay. So just text me again. Am I going to respond to the email? I'm going to try to, I told you, I'm trying to get some more administrative support, but I seriously want you to invite y'all schedule a zoom and then I'll pop in on the zoom to help y'all further the conversation. Listen, this is a game changer for you. As we are in the last quarter of the year, I am telling you, girl, there are some ways that you are showing up that are hindering your relationships, that are impacting you, that are sabotaging what you really want. You want connectivity. You want to have healthy relationships. You want to have um, um, deep relationships. It's going to require that you're self-aware. If you are looking at life through a lens of a pity party, woe is me, it's always me, nobody's ever loving me, nobody's ever there for me. Girl, I want you to become self-aware. Give someone permission. I am so glad that I'm saying this before we end this podcast. What do you do with all of this? Number one, I want you to be prayerful. I want you to ask God to illuminate what you need to see about you, the good stuff and the areas of growth. Ask him to allow him to see, allow you to see how dope you are, girl. You are dope. You are so amazing. If you would take your guard down a little bit, girl, everybody could see it, but you are so amazing. You are phenomenal, sis. But there are also some areas of growth. Ask God, ask the Holy Spirit to illuminate those things that you need to see about you. That's your prayer. Put that in your journal. God, illuminate, shine a light on the things that I need to see about me. Good and the areas of growth. Number two, ask God to give you healthy relationships, strong friendships with people who love him, who love you, and that can help you grow. Make it a prayer point. If you have those relationships already, I want you to give at least three people permission to tell you the truth about you. Now, listen, my girl toy, hey toy, my girl toy coined a phrase called placement issues. And she said, people sometimes think they have a place in your life that they do not. She coined it placement issues. I have stolen it, but I, I try to give her credit. And so I learned that the hard way, I told y'all in one of the episodes, I think the friendship episode, that I learned the hard way that in some relationships I was having placement issues. I was thinking that I had a different place in people's lives than I did. And so I was, um, saying things and pointing things out when they weren't asking me to. They, they weren't asking that of me. And I was inserting myself in some places that I may not have needed to. And so now I went all the way to the opposite end. This was many, many years ago. I, went to, I wasn't saying nothing to nobody unless they were a client. So then friends started to say, Robin, what are you doing? That's not how our relationship is. No, I want to hear from you. I want your opinion. I want you to tell me. And so for those who give me permission, now I know that when something shows up, because remember, we have blind spots. And so we could be doing things and we don't even realize it. And so now, uh-uh. so now I will say, hey, girl friend. <laughs> or if they bring something to me, there are friends who have not given me that permission in their life and I've learned the hard way. And so they may come to me and share something with me and I'm like, girl, so let me just go ahead and put myself on the blast. On blast. If you are my girl and you're pointing something out to me and I'm like, girl, for real? It's because I don't know that I have permission to tell you the truth, to say, well, well, friends, sometimes that is how you show up, okay? And so you want to give people permission. You want to say, listen, I consider you somebody that I can trust. And I really want you to point out things when I need to do better. I want to give you that permission, right? Now, you want to give them permission if you know they are doing their work. Don't give anybody that kind of permission if they're not doing their work. Because if they're not doing their work, they will project their stuff onto you and you'll become somebody that you were never meant to be. So that's your takeaway, sis. I hope this episode has helped you. I hope it has encouraged you. I hope it has blessed you. I am committed to helping you elevate not just what you do, but who you are. If this helped, can you let me know? Can you DM me? Can you comment? And can you share it with your folks? Until next time, sis, I'll talk to you soon.
Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Intentional Conversations with Robin May and friends. Listen, I am committed to helping you live life. And life stands for living intentionally, fully engaged. I am committed to helping you elevate not just what you do, but who you are. I am in the trenches with you, sis. And I know that this podcast is just one way that we can connect, but there is another way. I have created a course called the Life Course. And the Life Course is an opportunity for you on your own time, at your own pace, to get a PhD in you. If you are interested in learning more about the Life Course, just head on over to youcanlivelife.com. Youcanlivelife.com. Click the link for the Life Course. I truly believe it is the shift you've been looking for. Until next time, sis, I'll see you soon.